Greetings friends and fellow cigar box guitar enthusiasts. Del Puckett here and welcome to part two of the Baby Steps video where I'm building a Delacaster from one of these Java boxes here. And if you remember in the first video, we peeled the sticker off, we sanded it down, we cut out the sound holes, We um, file these edges here, and we also made the neck blank and glued the fretboard to the neck. So if you missed part one, go ahead and, go ahead and look at part one. This is part two, and in part two, what I'm going to do is I am going to file, or actually carve, the back side of the neck. I'll drill for the uh, piezo. As far as the box goes, I will install the switch, the jack, and the potentiometer. So that is tonight's baby step. On your marks. Get set. Go! All right, first things first. The first things first are clean up my mess from this afternoon. This will be a 30 minute video. Put a little bit of light on here. The Shinto Rasp. With a coarse side and a fine side. And I begin off with the coarse side. Why? Of course you know why. I wonder if these things ever get dull. I'm sure they do, but I have not experienced that yet. This thing is still as sharp as the day I got it. So when I do this, there's no like science to it. I'm just, where I'm at, I'm looking at it right here with my eye, I'm looking down here, and I just see the curve, and I see the high spots and the low spots. And I kind of go for a gradual taper from thicker on this side to thinner over here by the headstock. And it's a subtle thing. Yeah, we're making dust, people. Tell you what, this this rasp makes short order out of these necks. I like to, to carve a little bit of a of a relief right here on the back side of the headstock just to kind of delineate uh, the neck from the headstock right here. It's real subtle, not a lot, maybe maybe an eighth of an inch. This is just a round file. Now 
that's just to, like I said, that's just to create this little contoured effect here. That's all. And I'll tidy that up and make it look really good. looking good tell you what man these shintus they are magical Way done. More than halfway done. Now I go to the smooth side. You can even hear it, hear it, how it sounds even differently, huh? That's a workout. That's why I got such big muscles. Rawr. Okay, now, now what I do here is I get one of these sanding sticks. This is just a stick. It's got sandpaper glued to it. Rough side and a smooth side. So we're gonna start off with the rough side. like to hit this part here also. I gotta take off some of that dirt and the mud because this was a stick. This was sticking in the mud couple of weeks back so that's still dirt right there so I'm gonna take off <laughs> one of these guitars I built recently I left the, the dirt on the back and I just painted right over it how awesome is that huh now you can also do with sandpaper Get that dirt off. All right. 
we are just about fine-tuned on that part. And I can feel it here. I'm just running my finger along this edge here. And I got to take out some of that glue. And I can do that with the rough side of the stick here. Yep. Yep, I can feel there's still some glue sticking out on this side too. This is the quality control right here of the finger. Feeling the edge. I can feel some right there. Let's take it out. Okay, I'm ready to start sanding this now, but that neck looks awesome. Let me uh, let me just tighten up this little part right here a little bit. Another cool trick is to take your sandpaper or to take your file, your round file, and then wrap it with the sandpaper round, round wise. And it's kind of cool. Helps you get into those little cur curvature spaces there. Still taking some of the dirt off here. Man, that is looking good. Yep, and it's nice and smooth. I can feel the, the, the edges between the fretboard and the neck. It's coming together really good. Okay, so that's enough for the neck. Oh yeah, I did say I was going to drill out for the uh, the piezo. Now what I do for, the, for that is I, I know this is gonna be a 23 inch scale neck, so I put my marker down and I mark out the uh, exactly 23 inches where the where the piezo is going to go. Let me uh, adjust the uh, exposure so you can see that a little bit better. I do a mark right here. It's at the 23 inch. That's exactly where the saddle is going to be on top of this this thing here. And I get my drill and then my. Some people say Forstner, some people say Fosner. It's one of them kind of bits. And just go to town. And I take it down about a little bit more than an eighth of an inch. And uh, this, this doesn't have to look, look pretty because it's going to be embedded in hot glue eventually and then what I do is about a quarter inch up from that guy I start filing this this part down and this is to create that trough on the top here because I don't want this top to be touching the cigar box okay so this will be I'll do this on a different day this will be my next baby step the reason being is because I'm only giving myself 30 minutes and I don't want to spend my entire 30 minutes on the neck. I want to do some work on the box here. So um, you can see where I'm going to begin that trough right here, which is about um, 
little bit more than a quarter inch up from where that piezo is going to go right here. And this will, this will have a tele style bridge pickup here. So I'll probably end up filing this part down here a little bit more to put that, that pickup in it so that I clear the strings. Again, this is a baby step for a different day. I accomplished what I wanted to in uh, shaping this neck. Sort of. I'll still go back and maybe make this part a little bit cleaner and then maybe take out a little bit more right here, right here. Uh, but other than that, it's it uh, feels good. feels exactly the way a cigar box guitar neck should feel, especially right here. Okay, so now let's move to the box. Okay, so I know that my input uh, output jack is going to be right here. So I'm going to get my other size Bosner bit. The bigger one. This is about a little over an inch. This is like an inch, inch and an eighth. And I just eyeball it right about here. That one I go pretty deep because these are thick walls here and that jack has got to go all the way through that wall there so I give this guy a pretty deep deep cut right there so that's about gosh that's about a quarter inch because this is about it's not quite a half it's less than half but it's um, I don't know it's measuring let us let us measurement okay so I don't have my reading glasses on here and that's three-eighths a little bit more than three-eighths yeah it's, it's a sixteenth more than three-eighths and my depth is quarter inch exactly okay next I have a drill bit here that is the right size drill bit for my oh I don't have an input jack I gotta go to the input jack here they are. Let me get a nice one. Not that they're not all nice. They're all nice. Some are nicer than others. And I'm going to grab the nicest one. What I mean by nice, I mean this is called the long shaft. And they're called long shaft as opposed to short shaft. So this long shaft is three eighths so it would, it would barely fit through this thickness here that's why i gotta cut cut it a little deeper here all right but i have a drill bit that is the right size for this guy and so i keep this guy handy because i don't want to lose it Man, I am making a mess here. And then I take a round file. Make sure it's gonna fit. Fits perfectly. Now, before I do that, I also want to take this the edges of this thing off too. Why? Because well the all the edges everywhere else are rounded off. Why not have this also rounded off? So I just get sandpaper. Now you can do this afterward, after you stain it, which also looks good too. But I wanted to stain the box and the neck at the same time so that they tie together. And so uh, I'm, gonna, I'm doing this first now and then I'm gonna stain everything when I'm done. Again, this is just subtle nuance. Subtle nuance. All right, here we go. Some people call these input jacks. Some people call them output jacks. You can call it whatever you want. I won't get upset. You can just call it a jack for short, right? 
It's the jack. Okay. And then I have a specialty tool. It's this tiny little channel lock. I showed this to my friend one time and he started laughing out loud. He's like, that thing is so small. And I was like, dude, size doesn't matter. Just kidding. He thought it was cute. All right, so I just tighten that thing down. And the reason why I tighten this thing down is because that's the last thing in the world you want to come loose is that jack. And remember I said I was going to stain it? So that jack might actually come out when they stain it. Okay, two more things. The switch. And the potentiometer. So let's do the switch first. I also have the perfect drill that fits the shaft of the switch. And I know exactly where that's at because I put it back in the same spot every time. When I'm done with it, it goes right back here on the shelf. So that when I need to put the, the switch in, I know exactly where to go to grab this. All right, here we go. How easy is that? Round file again. And on the inside, you can just rip the paper off if it gets in your way. No one cares. Okay, switch. Now I like to do my, my ground up. My ground is up and my tabs are down. And when I do that, I know that this tab over here is gonna be the piezo, and this tab here is going to be the magnetic pickup. Now again, I'm gonna be taking these things out when I sand it. I'm just installing it right now just for the demo. Next is the potentiometer. In fact, well, yeah, in fact, in fact, don't go anywhere. How about we will also stain this here because I'm running a little bit ahead of schedule. All right, here we go. I got the, um, here's the right size drill bit for the potentiometer. It's going to go right here. Okay, so now I'm not going to put the potentiometer on, but if I was to put it on, it would fit perfectly. Take some more of this paper off. I'll do that later. The thing is, is not to lose them, right? Don't lose it. I mean, I got plenty more, but... It's amazing, you set stuff down and then you like, forget where it's at. So I'm setting it right here on the shelf. So, so remind me, it's right there on the shelf. Same thing with the switch. Right there on the shelf. And I'm gonna leave this guy in it. I'm gonna stain around it. Okay, so this thing here, is not quite ready for stain so I will uh, I'm gonna do that off camera I'm gonna stain this thing now just because I want you guys to see how awesome this thing looks once it is been stained okay so I'm gonna sand just a little bit more here I'm gonna get my fine fine grit sandpaper Man, 
man, this box is going to be awesome. I can tell already. Okay, so I am going to put some gloves on. First of all, I'm going to adjust the uh, exposure on this thing. So hang on one second. There, is that better? Okay, so I am going to put some gloves on. And these gloves here are latex. Watch out, watch how far these things stretch. Ready? Watch this. Isn't that crazy? Hallelujah. I'm serious, man. Shabang! Okay, so what color shall we make this? How about how about hmm? How about 50% dark walnut, 50% weathered oak? like it so I have a little little cup that I use for stain I have a q-tip that I'll use to dispatch way up here on the shelf you can't see it here's my uh, dark walnut and here is the weathered oak Dark walnut. Okay, we are going to go with equal portions. All right. So it's good to have a, a Leatherman in your pocket for just such purposes. Okay, equal portions. How do we do equal portions? Well, first off, I'm going to get some paper towel. And I'm going to cover this mess here with this. All right, is that better? Is that better? Can you see me now? Okay, here we go. So I, I don't have a whole lot of surface area to cover, so I don't need a whole lot here. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do the gray first. So I just put the Q-tip in there and drip it out. Q-tip in, drip out. This way I'm not spilling it. If I had a little spoon, I guess maybe that'd be better. All right, I must confess, I love the smell of stain. Oh my gosh. Okay, so now I am going to mix in. So I have, a, I have, a, I actually have a little bit more. So I, 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 I'm going to lean more toward this. So it's not going to be a 50-50 mix. It's going to be more of a 70-30. Mm, Okay, because this dark stuff goes a long way, dude. Okay, so I got, I can already tell already. Yeah, so this is, yeah, okay. No, actually, yeah, okay. It's like 80-20 now. So let me get a little bit more here. Okay. And I'm mixing it up and I think that's good that's about maybe it went too dark a little bit too dark maybe yeah I told you that that darkness that darkness goes a long way but I can wipe it off and I can sand it off if it, if it is indeed too dark all right here we go folks check this out this is gonna be awesome 
On your marks, get set, go. Yeah, I love, oh my gosh, just that alone right there. I can tell this is going to be awesome. Oh, I also like to stain the inside too whenever I'm doing these dark stains because it would look, it would just look dumb, dude, if it's if you if it's all in stain on the outside and not stain on the inside. So yeah, we're going to stain on the inside too. That is um, that is a definite must. I don't do the back. The back, I just let, I do let the back get all like fingerprinted and scratched and scuffed. But I don't, um, I'm not intentional about staining the back. I'm intentional about not staining the back. Okay, now you want to make sure that you do hit these sides here. Because if not, you'll be able to see them when it's closed. Man, that's going to be awesome. Okay, so remember that it's like a 70, 70 30 mixture of aged gray to dark walnut. And the reason why I need to remember that is because I want to do the neck exactly the same. Okay, remember we're gonna go around, around the jack. Yeah, see it wasn't a problem. That was quick and dirty. All right then. Okay, so right off the bat, I am going to wipe off kidding me? Wow. Dang, 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 dang. I say dang in a good way. That looks so awesome. problem with doing baby steps is that you get all into it and then you don't want to do a baby step you want to do a giant step so sometimes you do a giant baby step um okay i just want to dry this up off just a little bit and then i'm going to show it to you up close take my gloves off And like I said, I'm going to stain the insides here. Stain the inside so that when you're looking inside, you don't. It's not like a the wrong color. So okay, that's it for this baby step. I'm going to clean up this mess, and then I'll come back for another baby step tomorrow. All right, you guys. Chill out. Talk to you later.